criminal law, novus actus intervenians. Novus actus intervenians forms an aspect of legal causation in criminal law and refers to the inquiry as to whether the defendant's conduct, or omission, caused the harm or damage or whether an intervening act breaks the chain of causation. If something happens after the defendant's act or omission, the later act may break the chain of causation. This is known as a novus actus interveniens, that is a new intervening act which breaks the chain of causation. Different tests apply to decide if the chain has been broken depending on the intervening party. The act of a third party will generally break the chain of causation unless the action was foreseeable. In R. V. Paget, the defendant fired shots at the police and then used his pregnant girlfriend as a shield when they returned fire. The defendant was liable for her death as the actions of the police were foreseeable. Where the act is of the victim, the chain of causation will not be broken unless the victim's actions are disproportionate or unreasonable in the circumstances. In R. V. Roberts there was no break in the chain of causation where the woman jumped out of a moving car to escape the sexual advances of the defendant. Contrast the case of R. V. Williams and Davis where a male hitchhiker jumped out of a car driven at speed, as he feared the defendant was going to steal his wallet. His actions were deemed unreasonable and disproportionate, breaking the chain of causation. Where the victim is an adult of sound mind and makes a decision which causes death, this will break the chain of causation where the decision was free, deliberate and informed. In R. V. Kennedy 2007 the victim's decision to self-inject the heroin prepared and supplied by the defendant broke the chain of causation. In R. V. Wallace, the defendant threw a glass of sulfuric acid over her ex-boyfriend. This caused horrific injuries. He was left disfigured, partially paralyzed and in unbearable pain. He returned to his home country of Belgium where euthanasia is legal and made the decision to end his life. The trial judge ruled that this decision had broken the chain of causation so the defendant could not be tried for murder. The prosecution appealed. The Court of Appeal allowed the appeal and stated she should be tried for murder. The jury should consider if his decision to end his life was within the range of responses which might have been expected from a victim in his position. Where medical intervention contributes to death, the courts have been inconsistent in their approach. In R. V. Jordan the court looked at whether the wound was the operating cause of death. The defendant was not liable as the stab wound was healing when he died from an allergic reaction to an antibiotic. The same approach, but different outcome, applied in R. V. Smith where the soldier was dropped twice and doctors failed to diagnose his punctured lung. The defendant remained liable as the stab wound was the operating cause of death. However, in R. V. Cheshire the defendant was liable despite the fact the wound was healing. The defendant shot the victim in the leg and stomach. The hospital gave him a tracheotomy as he had difficulty breathing. He died from complications arising from the tracheotomy. The court departed from Smith and Jordan and considered whether the defendant's actions were significant in causing death. His action in shooting him could not be said to be insignificant in causing his death. Therefore he remained liable. In summary, a novus actus interveniens of the victim will break the chain of causation where their actions are unreasonable and disproportionate. Where the intervening act is of a third party, this will break the chain of causation unless it was foreseeable. If the new act was medical intervention the question is whether the act of the defendant was significant and the injury inflicted was the operating cause. This video is part of a series of videos on law from www.elawresources.co.uk. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash at elawresources. It's free to do so and will help us to keep providing these videos. Check out our website which provides lecture outlines and case summaries. See also www elawrevision.org.uk for revision games and quizzes. Thanks for watching.